<laughs> Welcome to Let's Talk Possibility. Today we're talking with Dr. Eugene Boerter all about health and wellness. Hey, welcome everyone to Let's Talk Possibility. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, in the studio with me tonight, I have my co-host Jack. How's it going? And we have our guest, Dr. Eugene Buerta and hi. our producer, Tim. And tonight we are talking about Let's Talk Around Possibility Around Health. So specifically, we, we want to share with you some ideas and our, our viewpoints around that health is so much more than just um, a bug in the air or, or genes that predetermine your your health and that that there's other ways of looking at what's happening with health and wellness and mm -hmm. really that that when we look at a more expanded view there's a lot more that we can actually take responsibility for and and do but before we go there anymore i just want to welcome you all to the new world yes thank you <laughs> and remember thank you guys. a couple of weeks ago Isn't i didn't know no it was actually well <laughs> according to you jack you're oh, going to just remind already? us the guy 21st of, of May was meant to be the end of the world. Now it's the is 21st it? of October. Next year's the Mayan calendar. <laughs> oh, you mean that world? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's uh, it. So, this is some, one, yeah, so no, Jack, you showed me sense. the ad. I did show you the ad, and it's dead now. October. <laughs> well, why you looked at it. Um, so this guy basically said the world's going to end on the 21st of May, um, and because we're still here, we must be in a new world then. I think so that's it is. <laughs> um, it's a new consciousness. If we're still here. Yeah. I think we got rejected, actually. Um, and we're just still here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, the chosen few. <laughs> yes. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Technically, it was supposed to be the... I can't think of it. Where all the people who believe get taken out of the yes. get left behind. Oh. So, so I'm, oh, is that, I'm terming is that it as we're talking about it. It's how you, you know, phrase it. Welcome to the new world. Yes. We're the ones here that get you all the exciting things. So... Yeah. To just catch up about some of our past shows. About some of your past shows, yes. yes. Tomorrow night, I am having pizza with Yolandi. Ah, <laughs> no, I don't remember, um, Eugenie Yolandi was in our first show. She's going to be the first woman to circumnavigate Africa on a bicycle. And yeah. a month ago now, yeah, April the 27th, Jack and I went to Cape Town and we and cycled. We the first day. Well, no, some, of us some, some of us cycled. Some of us didn't cycle. Mm. Some uh, of us I drove, drove the, the support vehicle all ready for my turn. And when it was my turn to cycle, we decided not to cycle anymore. You did a great job <laughs> driving <laughs> though. So thank you for that. <laughs> it was yeah. good fun. But yeah, so we saw Yolandi off, waved goodbye to her, my dear friend, thinking I'm only going to see her in two years' time. She went all through through the border, all the way up to, to, um, to Vintook. Vintook. Yeah. Then she tried to get in Vintook to get her visa for Angola. Mm -hmm. After like a week of whatever, Nightmare, hassles, the only way to get it was for her to come back here. So she, she came, flew back to South Africa. And today we found out, we just on Twitter on that, that she, her visa has been approved. Yes. Cool. Yeah, so I'm going to catch up with her tomorrow night. Um, we're having pizza at my favorite restaurant. And then she probably will be Friday, Saturday flying back to Vintook. And then she's got, th you were saying. Days. She's got 30 days then to make it to the border. Which is more than enough time, I think. Yeah. But she'll be doing some community work there in Wintook and in Namibia while she's there. Yeah, she's going to give and some talks uh, to some schools on her yeah. way. And then she'll be doing her second border crossing nice. to Angola. Exciting. So that's exciting. Exciting. Yeah. And there was, yeah, all from our first show. But getting back, uh, yeah, I suppose to tonight we've got you with us tonight, Eugene. Mm -hmm. Um. Wow, I was looking at it, so I'm just going to read them here. Oh, you're, you're so qualified and really, I see it as a, like a pioneer in the world of alternative healing, especially in South Africa. Mm. You are a doctor of science and natural medicine. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're a professor in tra traditional, traditional natural medicine, medicine yeah. a herbalist, a mm. phytotherapist, a That's body... Herbalist, phytotherapist, very much the same thing. <laughs> okay, I was about to ask that. What is a phytotherapist? <laughs> it's just like the fancy word for herbal, herbal medicine. Herbal okay. medicine. Okay. Or herbal therapies. You also instruct people and also practice full-time as a body talk practitioner, practitioner. and instructor. Yeah. And you're a philosopher. And I know when you ask me questions, my mind just... You, know, you turn my world upside down with your <laughs> philosophical <laughs> viewpoints. And also do martial arts. And is, is it kin, kinjutsu? Kinjutsu. kinjutsu. Kenjutsu. What is kenjutsu? Kenjutsu is basically Japanese sword strategy. That's what it's called. It's okay. Kenjutsu is the word for uh, ken being sword and jutsu the way. Okay. You know, the okay. way of practice. It's kind of like study kendo of or 
Kendo, kendo is, um, it's like the practice form of what we do. You know? Okay. So they, they use bamboo, um, like bamboo swords, and we use the real thing, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we don't have a lot of students. I've um, just seen some photos. <laughs> <laughs> the students <laughs> level stay we low. We normally do a 200 man <laughs> intake every year, but uh, we end up with about three. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some of those swords mm. or photos of them, yeah. Excellent. And um, so, so with that, that is your, your background and your study in that, there's, there's a lot happening in the world right now around consciousness medicine. Mm, mm, mm. And, and just to put everything in perspective, what t we want to talk about tonight and, and just to share is, is some views around where medicine is going, the, the new um, evidence and, and research that is showing that, that there's a lot more to the body and to health and wellness. Yes. And just so we, we're not... Um, it's very much a complement to traditional medicines. So, yeah, we, we're not we're not prescribing anything. We're not tonight. We're having discussion around health and what's possible around health. Yeah, and I and we're sharing ideas that that'll, as you say, complement. Yeah, we, we uh, like to look at it as integrate. integrate. Like it's integration. Very much integration. Yeah. So the idea is to not to say one's better than the other, but to use each one on its uh, in place. Okay. And, it, and it is definitely okay. a place when they all. I know my own experience, they've complimented so mm. much. Um, so, so maybe just to start to get the ball rolling, what, what is this, because everyone talks about consciousness medicine, mm. and I know specifically one of the areas you specialize in is body talk. So mm. maybe you can just explain a bit about consciousness medicine and body take, talk as one of the examples, because there's so many. There's Reiki, kinesiology, mm. Chinese medicine, and I don't even all, know all, all the, the names uh, of all of them. A wide variety of stuff. Con connective yeah, so. therapy, whatever. So, the, so the, um, the idea behind consciousness medicine is not a new idea. It's been around for ages. Um, like with the Chinese medicine, uh, they've got recorded history of five or 6,000 years where they've been working with meridians and watching behavioral patterns and emotions and also even then relating that into food substances and, and herbs and things like that okay, as well. So okay. each herb has got a consciousness which has a certain, we kind of look at it sometimes as a little personality of its own. Mm. Um, so you'll have something like ginger, which will give you a bit of a tingle when you eat it, you know, so it has a type of emotional response in the body and at the same time helps your circulation and helps your digestion. So if you think about that, that helps all, all the sweet things in life to actually move around a bit in the, in, in the body. Um, okay. <clears throat> but the consciousness medicine that we're looking at, um, this is a term that the founder of Body Talk um, uh, is, ki is want wanting to look at Body Talk at more instead of energy medicine, looking at it more as consciousness medicine, um, the body talk system has evolved quite a bit from the energy perspective to where we're working with different levels of consciousness. Consciousness essentially being how things actually come together, how things actually manifest, how the body actually knows what it must do. It has a consciousness about it. Okay, so it's, it's, is it understanding? It's well, understanding I can give you an example. If you take, for instance, a sperm and an egg coming together, that'll mm. form a cell. Okay, it sets up a set of cells which starts the beginning of everything. Mm -hmm. But from there, that'll split into two to four to eight, and so it goes on. And then some of those cells actually become a liver, and some of the cells become bone, and some of the mm -hmm. cells become a heart, and some of them become the brain. Yeah. And the question is, how do they know that they're doing that? And it's uh, the, the, the only way to kind of describe that is that there's a consciousness behind it. There's a consciousness driving that, okay, that makes um, sense. Okay. which creates the manifestation of things. And um, then in consciousness, you've got all the different things interacting. So you've got your physical substances, which we know so well, which is all the stuff that we can see and touch and physically feel and experience. And then you've got um, things like thoughts and beliefs and all this kind of thing. So part of the consciousness in, in something like an example for a belief system is that um, if you go to a restaurant and they give you a menu, you'll choose certain foods and that's based on your belief systems mm. so as you're brought up the way you're brought up the way you're taught what's good for you what's bad for you so we don't sit down in a chinese medicine uh, in a chinese uh, country and look for things like chicken and beef because um, well we do we look for chicken yeah, and we look for they, chicken and beef. they're offering you spiders and maggots and scorpions and you know yeah so um, which are the things we don't for them for. yeah they, they come here and they don't understand why we don't eat you know there's so much food out there and we don't eat it uh. <laughs> so this is the consciousness and the consciousness drives you to kind of have behavior um well sorry the belief systems drive you to have behavior the consciousness is like 
expressed through everything. Mm. Um, part of the body talk system is um, the, the essence of the body talk system is to be able to connect to what we call the natural innate ability the body has to heal, which contains in a sense holds all the information that one will ever need to understand about how a body got sick and how it actually can get better. And um, the techniques that we've got are to tap into this and um, be able to ask the body, you know, what is the sequence of healing that needs to take place mm -hmm. here? And we do that by actually setting up um, communication links, we call them. Um, we call them links and formulas and programs, but we'll essentially maybe uh, get led to link a pancreas to a liver and then maybe have to focus on something like sugar metabolism, which might have an external influence, um, which compromises the communication between the two uh, organs to uh, perform sugar metabolism, such as uh, stress outside, like work stress or something like that. So we've got techniques then to help to neutralize the external stress, which becomes an external factor, similar to the stuff that um, uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton speaks about in his book, and um, then get the liver and pancreas to actually communicate to each other. Mm. and sort out the sugar meta metabolism. Um, that's a very simple little link. So we can have complex things that come in there where there might be an active memory from childhood or something like fetal life or even something that's been inherited which actually leads to the belief systems that drive you to actually eventually stress at work and then have the compromise. So it can get quite big. Yeah. And some of the techniques we have, um, we can actually set up uh, programs to actually retrain like a behavioral pattern. So we've got a lot of different like habits and lights. addictions and things which can be retrained uh, with that. We've yeah. got a, we've got Sophie yeah. here asking a bunch of questions, mm. and I think uh, basically what she's asking is, um, what is consciousness? Um, is there really such a thing as consciousness? She was saying, is um, consciousness is just what we interpret as the various electrochemical processes going on in our brain. Is that what no. would you say? Okay, the consciousness is the the the. Uh, the easiest way for me to explain how to look at consciousness is asking the question, how does it work? All right, so if we looked at consciousness as electrochemicals, then we've got to ask the question, well, how do they do that? You see, mm. and when we find that, we'll find belief systems. And then we'll see what are the charges behind belief systems that set a response of chemistry to going in the body that then sets off the feeling of an emotion or a... Um, some sort of a, maybe a depression or joy and elation or something like that that actually happens in the system. But there's, the consciousness goes back to where it's all coming from so, and how it all fits together. That's kind of the question we have with that. Okay. <laughs> the best way to answer it is with a question. So, <laughs> so, so the, let's maybe just talk about a book. So if you want to um, I think that's what we'll get back to is there's a lot of research right now that, that's coming out about, you know, what we're talking about. Mm. So yes, it is around chemistry and physics and science mm -hmm. and, and, and more. So, so like the, the book that we, we've got, we want to talk about tonight is, yeah, even you can see there, it's the, called The Biology of Belief, Bruce Lipton. Um, there it is. There it is. <laughs> A little closer? Yeah. Yeah, sweet. Nice. And um, I, th I found it very interesting reading that the book because he's very much, he is, he goes, everything goes down to the cell. He starts off with the cell and how he's saying that, that in, the, in the, the cell, it's actually the, the membrane of the cell that, that's where the brain is of the cell. We used to think it was the nucleus, mm. but they're finding yeah, now with the, off, the yeah. epi, yeah. I mean, no, that's the epigenetics is another thing, that it's not the, nu the actual membrane is the brain of the cell. Mm. And it's the membrane that's got all the proteins that, that, that interact with mm. the external environment and then put signals into the cell for it, mm. yeah. what it must do. Yeah. Um, so it's fascinating that, that he's saying that from, from that and what they're finding out for the cell, then also he talks about epigenetics, that there's so much more to genes. Genes are not what predetermine us. It's yeah, the epigene epigenomes, yeah. Yeah, it's all related to the environment. So yeah, and how, the, yeah. how, the, how the cell interacts with the environment is what will trigger or not the, a gene to produce mm. certain mm. whatever it produces. Mm -hmm. And so yes, I don't That's know exactly if right. there, there's it, it so much so um, in that book. Yeah. That is sort of so interesting. And then he, he looks at in okay, biology of belief. He's basically saying that everything that we believe comes down to biology. Yeah. And well, I, it's yeah, it's <laughs> like how the belief systems affect the biology is what he's talking about. Yes. You see the the thing is with um, with science basically we can see what's happening, but we don't know how it's happening. This is the trick, you see. Um, 
So the things that they're looking at there is that, you know, in that science they're showing that they noticed with certain belief systems that that was limiting people to their lives or to experiences yeah. or like, for instance, like what they talk about in the living matrix where they're saying, you know, if you believe you've got an incurable disease, you have you one. Have one yeah. And if, if you, you believe, believe you can cure from it and you will. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's as simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> and so for the living, ma everyone, the Living Matrix is a movie that that's been released, um, and it's it showcases a whole lot of of the latest researchers and phenomenal minds uh, phenomenal, that are researching yeah. biology and yeah. physics and and quantum physics and energy. You 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 can mention some, but mm. they also give yeah, some really nice, interesting case studies, mm. like a woman who said she had like um, apparently an inoperable brain tumor, yeah. and and through d some. You know, just that I think she used a lot of NLP actually yeah, in that yeah, case study. Right, yeah. Yeah. It, she was able to go back, and there's no proof, there's no evidence anymore of yeah. of the of brain tumor. Yeah. Mm. And I know one of the things when I came to you, one of the biggest uh, breakthroughs, just to to give an example that I had in my my health challenges was when I came to you. You said, like, so, so why have you come to see me? And I rattled off, I've got this big diagnosis, da 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 da, -da, -da. and you said, well, give it to me if you've got it. <laughs> And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I literally said that. I don't know if you remember. Probably not. But, and uh, you said, no, well, you actually just experiencing a whole lot of symptoms that your medicine to calls give a that. To form a label, yeah. That gives you that label. Yeah. So if you're experiencing that, then tomorrow or the next day or the next week or the next year, you next will experience minute. health. And I know that for me, and that's really, for me an example of belief, when I got that, it was one of the mm. turning points for me. And it just showed me the power of just thinking differently, how my, my actual physiology and body changed. And, yeah, and the trick yeah. that we have is being able to get it. This is the trick. So in the body talk system, we're specifically looking also at different levels of consciousness, which we actually call filters. It's, it's kind of how you believe you are, how you believe you exist, how you believe you function. Mm -hmm. and how you believe you fit together and then um you know we can we can take uh, something like a diagnosis with a label with a word that we've never heard in our lives before and as a <laughs> condemnation you know and it's uh, it doesn't really work that way the the idea of um labels is just to to sort of give a, a short word to a whole complex, complex matrix yeah. of things that yes. are going on but the way that we need to get to it is to firstly understand that it's an experience. It's you don't own it. If you created it, please stop doing it. That's <laughs> the idea, you know. So, um, and then to just help people to break up the filters, which are the thoughts, belief systems, and things behind it. The how it occurs. Yeah. The how it occurs is different in each person, unfortunately. So, um, you know, it, it does take, it's not something that you can just say, okay, today I'm gonna not believe in it anymore. It's not there anymore. It doesn't work like that. You've yeah, got yeah. to actually have, um, you know, some help, which we call, we talk about observers. People actually have to observe you change and observe you hel uh, become healthy. And mm. observe, you know, like in your case, I observed that you couldn't give me the thing. So just like we can ask about energy medicine and not believe in it but you couldn't give me your disease so it's gone yeah. um so or did it exist in the first place but the idea is to then work through the filters so um again we're not saying that um, one mustn't have modern medicine because modern medicine like we know is life-saving in many many aspects but unfortunately there's a lot of abuse with it as well um and we want to try and complement on deeper aspects the body's own ability to heal itself this is the big principle is how does the body heal itself? And to yeah. tap into that and switch that on. What is compromised? Communication between two parts are compromised. We get them going again and the body kicks in, starts healing again. It, uh, in 99% uh, of the cases, it knows exactly how to do that. There are yeah. some things that are a bit tricky, which the guys are working on and they're trying to figure it out, um, um, which are very deep levels of the body to called blueprints and things like that. Um, if the blueprints are damaged, you know, we're still working on techniques for that. So yeah. I, sure. I don't know if this question is a little global, mm. but why doesn't the body just do that then? Yeah, this is the thing. The, the belief systems is one of the big things that gets in the way because we inherit a whole bunch of belief systems. So you're born with a whole bunch of them and then you get taught a whole lot of them. Um, mm. So um, just as a, by the time, uh, uh, Bruce Lipton talks about it quite a bit as well, by the time a child's four years old, He's actually got all the belief systems of his parents and will function like that from there onwards, using that to live live life. Okay. Then there's been some research on um, 
uh, it was actually quite a creepy one. It, I actually saw a photograph of the one research thing that they did, and they were researching an illness in a, a great-grandchild, and they actually had a photograph of the great-grandfather at the same age, and they looked exactly the same, <laughs> okay, which means that what they're saying, what they're seeing with that is that um, if the great-grandfather, for instance, went through a space of an illness or a famine or you know, where they were starving and suffering and they had all sorts of things going on in their lives which were really traumatic or ex the way that they experienced things, mm. it can still filter through and be held as an unsolved or unresolved, what do you want to call it, an issue or a belief system, mm. which then can actually manifest in the person. And it's almost like what we're seeing is that even in certain ages, like the father may have turned, uh, the great-grandfather may have turned 24 and then went to war and he was there for three years and had incredible trauma and maybe even injuries, and then the, the person on this side, which has never seen a war or anything like that, starts having the experiences like flashbacks and symptoms from the body and all that kind of thing. Okay. And when we, with the technique, we use to actually neutralize it, when we can neutralize those beliefs, and uh, we, we call them active memories in a sense. They, they active emotional charges that trigger by different um, factors on the outside and some of the things that um, Dr. Bruce Lipton talks about as well is little trigger points that actually will activate the cells like you said to respond um, and the cells, the, the, some of the stuff is in cellular memory but there's other places where it's stored as well which is not in the cells yeah. um, so uh, essentially the trick to balance all of this and get it going and getting that innate wisdom, the innate ability for the body to heal itself again going is to get those things out of the way, neutralize things, and essentially give the, what that's what they're talking about with information medicine, is to give the right information to the brain, for instance. So that, you know, your amygdala in the brain is a fight-flight response center, it's kind of paranoid part of the brain, okay. which is very, very involved with your, your kind of decisions on how you actually behave. But if it gets distorted information because some belief systems are set up in different filters in the brain, then, you know, you can be saying something like save the world and put chocolate sauce on your ice cream comes out on the other side and it's a bit distorted. It's quite an extreme example, <laughs> but it sometimes does that, you know. Mm -hmm. So then the amygdala is going to respond to that, you know. So, Or you might say there might be something like a belief system, you know, live in harmony and then the amygdala through its distortions picks up, okay, well, we're in danger because we've got to focus on living in harmony. and. Mm -hmm overreact to that and that can actually lead to health problems lots of health problems um, we've got all sorts of cases like your um, body pains all over the place joint pains funny things in the digestive system spasms in the large intestine all sorts of things that come from that mm. um, so if i'm understanding so so what happens with body and why you say the body doesn't spontaneously just do it is there's something about that witness yeah when which someone's in present yeah. You know, we've seen when, when we chat, you know, when someone's there and asks you a question, you're able to access information you yeah. need to make yeah. the change. That's right. That's, That's exactly what, what, uh, what okay. healing that takes. You sense. need some yeah. a witness to yeah. the he for the body to, to start healing and, and, and become heal. aware of what needs yeah. what information is okay. missing. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That's that's how I understand it. So we're saying a lot of the obviously your thoughts and, and beliefs um, have a, a huge role to play in, in what's happening, and some of them are uncon these unconscious. I call most them unconscious. Of them, most, of them are, most of them are unconscious. Memories. We're not aware. We're not, We're not even aware, aware of yeah. the memories that are. Yeah, that's why we can't just cells. decide not to do it. You've but then, uh, but then, those things obviously play. Uh, those memories, beliefs, those all have an impact on our emotions, and yeah. those emotions then obviously also have an impact on our health. So it's kind of like a yeah. The emotions are chemistry. Okay. A lady called Candace Bird did some research on that, and um, the f what she found was essentially that the, there's chemistry called neuropeptides. This they talk about a lot in What the Bleep Do We Know. Um, there's chemistry it's called neuropeptides, um, which form in the brain, um, which are actually emotional experiences. And they can also be like angers, rage, frustration, fear, worry. They kind of attach in that kind of way. Mm. And then when you experience the situation, through your filters, your belief systems, your brain will perceive things in a certain way and set off a reaction, which is chemistry, which will then make you do something. Either you'll run away or you'll respond or you'll fight or whatever it might yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, the, there's a lot of chemistry. This chemistry, if there's a lot of it, you can actually become addicted to it. 
So you can actually, on the cellular level, if there's too much of the chemistry going around, the receptor sites change on the cells. The receptor sites are where the information is picked up from the cell. They're like little aerials that sit on the cell like that. Okay. And they pick up the information to then respond as well. That's kind of one of the aspects there. And if you have, say, a lot of anger in your life, you have a lot of frustration going on for a period of time, the body resets itself to be able to handle all the anger molecules and then sets up more receptor sites for anger, but then it'll drop the ones that the cell needs to actually function, like maybe vitamin B or serotonins or whatever like that. So it's, like, it's like getting addicted, addicted to a drug, basically. Almost. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing. The, the drug helps because it makes the serotonin more and things like that, so you feel better. So, But it's then it's a false experience, so mm. the, the, the cells are still dealing with trying to deal with all the anger uh, neuropeptides. But yeah, you can then get addi addicted to it, where you'll, you know, you'll then have behavior where you'll always try and get into an argument because the anger drives you and you feel better. The brain can also get screwed up in its reward systems where it then rewards you for getting angry. I can actually relate to because that. Because it, <laughs> it works for us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. No, we all, we all have that, yeah. And anger is actually a very healthy emotion, funny enough. It's, um, it's very useful. Yeah, mm. the idea Handled of anger, well. one of the main ideas is actually to make things move. Mm. When things are getting stuck, it's to help them it's to move to along. Push it through. You get so much energy yeah. when you're angry. Yeah. Well, the, the, the anger in an unhealthy space goes into a violence where we're violating someone. Okay. It doesn't have to be physical violence, but you can mm. do mental, emotional violence with it. Mm. Um, but if it's an anger, which also even has an aggression to it, it can be quite healthy. And it's short-lived and it does its job and gets out of there. Yeah. It serves a, it yeah. Serves a purpose. Yeah. Everything serves yeah. a purpose. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So we're so saying there, there's a lot about, I think, obviously yeah. emotions and the way we, we think That's and the <laughs> belief systems that we have that yeah. that influence. Um, this leads on to the placebo effect because mm -hmm. in both the movie, the, the Living Matrix that we we talking about tonight, and also the biology belief, the book, they both mention the placebo effect, which is sounds like a lot of of case studies and you know. Um, yeah, the, the one the one of the things. Well, there's actually two things that 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 kind of uh, stuck with me. The one is they mentioned that placebo, a third of all medical um, outcomes, a third of all those are placebo. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the one that I'm always talking about is is this uh, uh, the experiments they do with pl placebo, not just uh, chemi chemicals like pills and stuff, but also with operations where they do placebo operations. Yeah. And they still get the same results, and it's like mind blowing for me. It's, it's like wow, you know. The the placebo, um, uh, I think a part of it will probably rely on the observers to observe an outcome. Okay, so mm. um, there was a experiment they did with electrons, where they they set up a like a, a plate with a groove in it, and they bombarded electrons through these through this groove. And then there was a wall in the back which it projected onto and they could pick up in the back they could pick up what the electrons were doing and when they just did it just randomly the there was one groove and the electrons went through and formed three lines on the back okay i think you're talking about the double slit experiment it's yeah, so two groups, not so two grooves okay the one that mm -hmm. i saw on uh, what the bleep they showed one groove so just yeah it's just, just more yeah, next so with probability and stuff yeah. like that, yeah. and then they put an observer there and uh, um, is it the same one that we're talking about? We're talking they put about the double slit experiment, which goes that, um, or it's got to do with, I'm not going to go into the exact, yeah. but it is quite, it actually goes more to quantum, quantum, quantum mechanics, mechanics and yeah. how yeah. they work, and the yeah. fact that the theory is that every, and it's actually with light particles that they do it, not necessarily, they can okay. electrons, yeah. that any particle actually travels throughout the universe in one single and then lands up the most, Probabil probabilistic point point on moment. that side but what they found with this one is when they put an observer there to observe the one slit objective yeah. it made one one marking yeah. on the other side that's is that the same what they did yeah, with that one? So yeah so go look yeah. into the doubles Google double slit experiment or yeah. to so that's that's so probably okay so yeah so have a look at it. the one that I saw on so what the you can't hear you hey yeah okay. so oh. the audience can't hear you Tim <laughs> this, this mic is not always the best for <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, the, the point of that thing is that the observer 
in the in the placebo idea, the observers also play a role in that. If they're observing or looking for an objective of something to occur, it can actually have an effect on the person. Okay. It's just like um, in the body talk, we p play, pay a lot of attention to that because the way that we actually activate the links of communication that we are assisting to uh, uh, rehabilitate you know from the compromise the practitioner actually has to focus on the information that needs to participate in that and then intend it so we're, we're actually looking for it happening mm. if that makes sense mm. it's, uh, you can't really do it on the person but you can watch it happen in the person so it's almost like as we're talking to the body we're communicating with it and then, you know, things become aware or the body systems become aware of what's, what's functioning, what's not functioning, who's communicating with who, who's not communicating with who. And just by observing it, then it can actually have an effect like that. In the advanced, uh, with the advanced practitioners, we have uh, actually experiences where um, we actually just sit down with a person and then a lot of links start forming by themselves mm -hmm. just because of what we know is the the potential is in the body for doing it by itself. That's amazing. So then we sit there and we actually have an experience um, where, you know, you, when you're lying down, uh, when the energy starts moving, the person's stomach starts gurgling. Gur, gur, gur. And oftentimes we just sit with a person, <laughs> yeah. look at them, and then it goes gur, 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 and starts moving and starts Googles. adjusting. You're yeah. lying and you think, oh, I wonder if you can hear that. <laughs> <laughs> but it is amazing. So um, just one of the placebo effects where, where there were, is very a lot of controversy around was the, um, the bracelet. What do you call it again? The power balance the bracelet. power balance bracelet. So there's a, mm -hmm. a lot of evidence to say it doesn't work yet. Some people are wearing it because they believe it helps them. Yeah. To yeah. I'm not exactly sure on the mechanisms behind it, but yeah, you could probably ride the wave of that science and create a few fakes and have a placebo effect as well. <laughs> but if it's got to do with symbology, um, I'm not sure what the technology is in there, but if it's got to do with symbology, symbology is very powerful and... Uh, uh, I believe it's an uh, Egyptian, so ancient Egyptian uh, system that they actually use for that. that they, they say yeah. is part of the bracelet. Hologram. But it's oh, with all the tests, they've actually done the whole placebo test with these yeah. things, yeah. and it's been proven to have zero significant effect, effect. compared to a bangle that looks identical, looks identical but that has yeah. none of these things. Yeah. So yeah. they're proven it's as, so long as, they, the as long as they didn't do that on a double blind study, because double blind studies have shown to be ineffective. <laughs> Which is so interesting because like it's there's, oh, there's you there's so you can you can get a you can get a placebo effect result l looks like a placebo effect or result or not result from yeah. that but double blinds have been shown to not be uh, as effective as Sorry, they, I as they were. Sorry, I disagree with you there. Yeah, that's okay. You can speak to the World Health Organization, not me. <laughs> <laughs> But I think just, just getting back to the, to the placebo effect, is, is we just thought that bracelet was an interesting um, example of it, of, of some people getting great, believe that, you know, yeah. they're getting effects oh, yeah. from it. But it's just going back to, it's mentioned in the book and in the movie, and that I suppose behind it, what we're trying to say is that, that the way you think... It's also a belief system. Belief system. It's, it's a yeah. belief system, and mm. a belief system mm. is just basically the thing, and that will influence your body. So... Yeah, we we coming to the end of our show for tonight, but but maybe I think if we what we're wanting to, to just point out by that, yeah. just to end on that yeah. it, is that health is not just about a germ that's in the air or about um, your genes. There, there's so much more, and and the latest research is showing, and I think that's why there's there's so many of these consciousness medicine mm. there's popping a lot of up systems everywhere. Coming a lot of up, so yeah. many systems are coming up because they're getting results mm. and they are complementing. It w exists what the we know already around yeah, yeah. around the body and health and wellness. Mm. So for me, it's very exciting because it gave me a sense of empowerment that I could actually do something around my health. Yeah. I could not just sit there and, and, and wait for some medication to work. I actually... You took an worked, active role in, in, very active in your health and, and, and solving your... I think that's the first your, step. Your, your experience illness, of yeah. my disease. Yeah. One of the first steps is to recognize your experience and then say, well, what is it? Hmm. And then look at it from there. And then I looked at everything, you know, so it's looking very holistically at hmm. my thinking, my emotions, the way I related, hmm. the um, biology, so the, hmm. the medication, the hmm. um, supplements, the eating, the rest, hmm. the, yeah, everything. So there's. Yeah, I think. Hope uh, you just got to, to think a bit differently around hmm. health from, hmm. from our bit of a discussion. And we sparked off some debate. <laughs> I know, S no, Sophie, you've been so having lots of <laughs> comments that <laughs> we haven't If had I can a say chance. one thing on the potential side, remember that potential is only something that sh hasn't been interacted with. 
Mm. So that. essentially, yes. potential is potential, and stay like that until you step into it. And okay, I like that. Take a chance. Yeah. Work with it. Okay, so, excellent. So um, our next show is in two weeks' time on the 28th of June, where we're going to be talking about um, what's possible around wine and, and the, the future. future. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a very different show Definitely for us. Definitely looking forward to that one. Yeah, and tune in tomorrow night for Let's Talk, Talk Geek. Geek. The yeah. guys are going to have a show around everything that's geeky. Um, <laughs> where we're all about all possibility. And so, yeah, thank you so thank much, Gene, for coming to you and, and sharing with us. It's been really thank insightful. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. And all the links that we spoke about will be in the show notes, and we'll see you in two weeks. Yeah, guys, all your questions, comments, please uh, put them on the website or Twitter or yeah, Facebook. Yeah, thanks. And thanks, everyone. And, yeah, uh, Sophie, Jody, you guys, for listening in and commenting. Yeah, and until next time. Let's talk possibilities. Bye. Ciao, guys. <laughs> Ciao.